Welcome grade 12 to trigonometry, compound and double angle identities. Just before we start, I want us to go through all the formulas or the formulae that you need to know for double and compound angles. All right, this is the double angle formula for sine. We've got three double angle formulas for cosine. And uh, you choose whichever one will make simplifying the problem easier. And this is the cosine um, compound angle expansion formula. This is the formula for the compound angle of sine. Of course, we don't bother uh, with memorizing these uh, formulas because they are given in the formula sheet. In question one, we're given an expression of sine p plus sine q equals to 7 over 5. And we're also told that angle p and angle q are complementary. So together they add up to 90 degrees. Without using a calculator, determine the value of sine 2p. All right, the first thing we want to do, since we have to give our solution in terms of p, what we want to do is uh, we have to give our solution in terms of P. So we actually want to write everything in terms of P. So we have to write this uh, angle Q in terms of P. And the way we do that is we use this information given here. All right, so if you want to write angle Q in terms of P, it will be 90 degrees. And we just take the P over minus angle P. All right, so let's uh, rewrite our expression. Now it will be sine P plus sine Q um, all equal to 7 over 5. Now remember we will substitute, uh, we will write Q in terms of P, so we'll have sine P plus sine of 90 degrees minus angle P. Okay, and of course, this is equal to 7 over 5. We know that at 90 degrees, sine and cosine are co-ratios, so sine will become cosine P. Now to simplify, we could square both sides because ultimately we're trying to get to sine 2P. So if we expand, Okay. Of course, if we multiply this out, Okay, and of course, once we get to this step, we know the identity that tells us that uh, sine squared plus cosine squared will give us 1. And uh, these two terms are like terms, so we can add them. And of course, we can already see that we have found the double angle of sine, so we could write that part as sine 2p. And this is basically what we're looking for. And we can take the 1 over so we've actually found sine 2p. Now all that's left is that we simplify the right hand side 
And of course, if you want to simplify the fraction, we need to write one also as a fraction. And the way we simplify this fraction is we want to make the denominators the same. So we multiply this fraction with uh, the other fraction's denominator, which is 1. And we multiply the fraction on the right-hand side with the other fraction's denominator, which is 25. This way, we can get the denominators to be the same. 49 times 1 is 49 over 25. And 1 times 25 is 25 over 25. 49 minus 25 will give us 24 over 25. And that is our solution. Moving on to question 2. In question 2, we are given sine 29 in terms of k. And of course, we know that uh, sine is opposite uh, over the hypotenuse. All right, or oh, to make our lives easy, we can actually use this triangle here. And uh, if 29 degrees is over there, then the opposite side will be Y. And this will be R. And of course, the adjacent side will be X. So we can put the K over 1. And we know that sine is y over r. Okay, so y is equal to k and r is equal to 1. So we need to find x. And if you go to 2.1, you'll find that is exactly what we need to do. Because we know that cosine is actually x over r. All right, so x we don't know, but r we know is 1. So x divided by 1 will just give us x. So for 2.1, when we're calculating cosine of 29, we are basically just calculating x. And how could we calculate x? We can use the theorem of Pythagoras, which states that for x, to find x, you uh, square root r squared minus y squared. And of course, r squared in this case is 1. And we know that y is actually k. All right, 1 squared is still 1 minus k squared. And that is our x or our cosine of 29 degrees. Let's go on to the second part of the question. All right. We know that uh, we can write cosine of 58 as cosine 2 times 29. Remember, we're trying to use 29 because our ratios in the beginning were given uh, in terms of 29. So 58 is 2 times 29. Now, we can expand using the double angle uh, of cosine. We know there are three, so for this question, it doesn't really matter which one we choose. Um, let's use this one. Squared minus. All right, let's choose this one. This is the first one given in the formula sheet. All right, from the previous question, we know that cosine of 29 was the square root of 1 minus k squared. Uh, that's from the previous question. And in the beginning, we were given sine of 29, and sine of 29 was given as k. But of course, we square it. So the square will cancel out the square root. So you're left with 1 minus k squared minus k squared. So if we simplify, we get 1 minus 2k squared. That is our solution. Moving on to question 3. Uh, in question 3, we have to prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, which is sine of x. Okay, so that's sine of x. All right, and obviously for this question, we need to use our compound angle identities. 
and the formula if we expand this using uh, compound angle identity will be cosine of x excuse me so it's cosine of x cosine of 180 degrees the only thing that changes here is the sine Okay, that's the that's the first part. We've extended it. Now let's uh, expand the second part, which requires us to use the compound formula for for sine sine x cos forty five plus Okay. All right, so if we simplify, we've got cosine of x multiplied by cosine of 180. Now, what is cosine at 180? To check this, let's just go to, we go to the cosine graph. All right, if we look at this cosine graph, the normal cosine graph, you will see that at 180, the graph is actually negative 1. At 100 and, uh, sorry, 180 degrees, the graph is negative 1. So from the graph, we know that uh, the cos, uh, cosine graph at 180 degrees is negative 1. Now, we've got sine x. We're going to multiply this by sine at 180 degrees. Again, we go to the sine graph to check. And uh, we could see that 180 degrees is over there. So the sine graph is actually 0 at 180 degrees. So the sine graph is actually 0 at 180 degrees. So we multiply by 0. So let us also simplify the second term. So you've got sine x and cosine of 45 degrees. And of course, uh, over there we also have sine of 45 degrees. And these are special um, triangles. We need to use our special triangles for the special angles. So let's just go to special triangle diagram. All right, so if we find cosine of 45 degrees, then if this, let's use this 45, then we know that cosine is the adjacent side, which is one over the hypotenuse, which is root two. And sine of 45 will be the same because sine of 45 will be the opposite side, which is 1 over the hy uh, hypotenuse, which is root 2. So cosine at 45 degrees and sine at 45 degrees are the same. They are both equal to 1 over the square root of 2. All right, so we know from the diagram that uh, cosine at 45 is 1 over root 2 plus cosine x. And sine at 45 degrees is also 1 over root 2. Simplifying further, because that disappears. So if you multiply the root 2 into sine x, we'll have root 2 sine x over another root 2. Plus, multiply, so multiplied it there, we also multiply it into the last term. So we've got again root 2 cosine x over another root 2. Okay, so, so what we have
because those will cancel so we're left with sine x and of course that was our right hand side so we've proven that our left hand side is equal to the right hand side